Hey, good morning, everybody. Woo, we're going to talk about decomposing stuff. Yeah. Can we get some little, like, yeah. All right, all right, all right, great. Uh, well, thank you so much for having me this morning. I'm so excited to talk to you about basically one of my favorite things to do um, weirdly changed my life. And like, this is not one of those like Oprah kinds of tales, but like, I will say that for the first part of my career, um, I was like an entertainment journalist, like stilettos, red carpets, like totally not sustainable anything. Um, I worked at the Daily News and the Gossip Columns, and it was just like, it was a little bananas, and it was the opposite of this. Um, I grew up in New York, never grew a certain, you know, we had a backyard, but that was like where we went to get to the patio to like stand on concrete, you know what I mean? Um, and I never did anything nature-y, right? This is like something we as urban people often feel um, and experience. And um, like kind of towards the end of my 20s, you know, print was dying and I went on this thing that you know, the Saturn returns, I think like some of us have maybe heard about it when like your life, you re everything's aligned in the universe travel, thought about my soul, and um, I started cooking more. I started being kind of broke in this freelance artsy way that maybe other people in this room may also know. Um, and I started being much more aware of the things I was doing and the world around me because I wasn't in my headspace, like working and on my phone and thinking about things. Um, and so I started composting. Um, I took, well, first I started composting with my own idea of it based on the internet. And I got these worms. It seemed like, oh, you could put them in a box and they transform everything and it's amazing. Um, so I was like, yeah, worms. I got them. I killed my first batch. It was horrible. And it was smelly and it was bad. And, and I was like, ugh. And like, th there's a lot more guilt with worms. I'll tell you all right now. It's amazing. And we'll talk about worms. But the problem with worms is that they're like alive and you kind of like, oh yeah, like Bill and Tom. And then like suddenly they're dead, right? <laughs> Um, so I was like, how do I do this right? So New York City, actually, I was still freelancing, so I had all this time. Um, and New York City has a master composter certification program. We also have a gardener's program. Um, it's free, and you can apply, and there are like people around the city that, um, organizations around the city that offer it year-round. But it's like six weeks of like intense, you're going to become a composter um, person, like, you know, whatever. There's community service, there's all this stuff. Blah, blah, I fell in love with composting. Um, and so over the years, you know, I, I wrote this book about composting. Um, I have a blog, and I've done it like in every way, shape, and form. So everything we're gonna talk about today, I've tried. I can help you if you're trying it and you're having troubles. If you're killing it, I want you to share it with the group and we'll talk about killing it in a good way, like not killing the compost in the worm. <laughs> um, but I've kind of come to this place where, you know, People are like, oh, the art and elegance of composting, right? It seems like, what is she saying? It's like dirt and like decomposition. Um, but I sort of feel like there are definitely powerful like metaphors and transform, you know, transforming what you might want to throw away or is gross or just leftover into something beautiful. So that's kind of a nice thought. Um, but I do think there's an art to it, and art not in a complex technical sense, although there are a couple complexities and a couple technical things you should know as you go on your composting adventure. Um, but like, just like we kind of convince ourselves, like, yeah, I want to go to the gym all the time. I do want to cook. I want to have a lifestyle that has certain elements to it. I can make choices throughout the day. Like, I have found, I don't know, I like my little like activities of composting, and I think that there isn't art to allowing, or all right, totally to speak for myself, there's an art to allowing myself to connect, right, to a bigger thing, and an elegance that comes with that connectivity, um, and that takes away some of the squeamish, gross fears, like all the things that we have bundled up in our mind about like garbage, blah, 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 blah. So that is like where this concept comes from, and you guys let me know if it works or not afterwards, because I always love feedback and uh. Um, but to be a little bit more practical, because I know this is a hands-on group, this is FIT, you guys are thinkers and librarians, there's like a very practical thing. So I've kind of combined a second talk that I like to give, um, which is how to do all this stuff in a bucket, so you don't have to spend a lot of money, you don't have to, we don't have space, yada, yada, yada. So, um, raise your hand if you compost. Oh my god, this is amazing. So can we just like quickly, can you tell us like what you do? Ooh, starting with the camera, maybe, the person behind the camera. What do you do to compost? I put all the food stuff in buckets under my sink. And because I live in desert compost, I do it in the garden and then I get time to put all of my clothes and food waste in my backpack and I ride to the supermarket. 
Yes. Who does something like that? Who does green market drop off? Okay, that's where I started too. Okay, who else? Yeah, one of the pilot programs for the organic waste recycling. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Yes. Yes. Anyone else want to share there? Okay, so the three of you, because you raised your hand, are now going to get pulled into this, like, big narrative. So I have a question for you guys. Um, it sounds like it's optional where all of you are, so why do you do it? Good for the environment? Makes me feel like I'm Okay, I love this. So basically, you all just gave my presentation for me. Um, so let's break down what we all just like talked about, right? There's a big macro level of why we all want to compost. Someone said it's good for the environment. Sure it is. Did you guys know that like over one third of, the, of what goes to landfills today between organics, paper scraps, uh, or paper product scraps, I should say, uh, landscaping, and when I say organics, just now like it's anything like food, anything, right? Not like organically certified. Um, so over a third of what goes to landfills um, could be compostable if it was diverted. That is a lot. Um, and if you think about like all that stuff being trucked all over the place or however garbage gets to its final destination, it's a lot of trucks and gas and everyone knows fossil fuels are bad. Um, when you think about what happens once it's in the landfills, um, usually it's in these like bags, you know, hefty or whatever. And, um, because it's A, mixed up with all sorts of things like your broken toilet seats and your like whatever other garbage um, and not connecting with each other and in an airtight bag um, that creates anaerobic conditions. So things do break down in anaerobic conditions, like kind of, you know, compressed down, but um, that produces like methane and other greenhouse gases. It creates ammonia as a byproduct that then leach through these bags and like into the soils and the waterways. Uh, it's awful. Um, and so that sucks. So that's the whole landfill piece of it. Uh, we know carbon is a problem. Organic stuff comes from carbon. Um, and by kind of segregating it out in the landfills, it's not being returned to the cycle of life that Mother Nature intended one way or another. Um, and you know, there's this thing, it's like the not fun fact. Um, it's sad. I don't know, like a couple years ago, did you guys know it was like the year of the soil? Okay, so this was like a global campaign, a soil awareness. Um, so in the last 150 years, half of the Earth's fertile topsoil, gone. Um, agricultural processes are not so great, you know, kind of big agra. Um, I'm sure you guys know about that. Then we have like obviously building and lands, you know, cities and paving. And so that, that is not a good situation. And um, every single year, the UN estimates that we are losing 24 billion tons of fertile topsoil. Um, so, wow, like, I don't know, that, I like to be an optimist, it's like, this is kind of challenging me a little bit right now. So, it's kind of a hard time. Um, so, if you compost, sorry, we will alleviate a little bit of this in our own way. And, you know, you'd mentioned, oh, you're doing your little part, right? Imagine, right, if we all did, like, a little part. No one's asking to transform anyone's life here, but, like, oh, my God, just a little bit. And then it becomes a lot bit, and there's this whole gateway drug process thing that I will get into. Um, micro level. Okay, so what is compost? People are like, oh, it's fertilizer. Oh, it's soil. It's kind of like a combination or like a mediator between those things. Um, compost is a really rich soil amendment, and soil versus dirt. Does anyone know the difference? Okay, so like dirt, you're like, Ugh. Yeah, well, you know, Jay-Z, like dirt off my shoulder, but it's like... Dirt, oh, dust, something's kind of like stains, whatever. Soil is actually an ecosystem, right? There's bazillions of living things in there. Um, they all work together to kind of create 
beautiful end products, AKA plants and each other, and that kind of feeds the whole food cycle, life cycle on this earth from the bottom up. Um, so what does compost do? Well, it's super organically rich, and so when it is added to soil, uh, it breaks down slowly as nature intended so that plant roots and all the like little creatures in the soil that help break things down for plant roots get the nutrients they need in the time and like pacing that they need it to, that they need to. So the flip side of that would be maybe like your miracle grow where you're like, this is food. Kind of the same way like Red Bull is food. Um, so you like pour it on the plant, the plant's like, I feel great, and then it like gets really tall and then like falls over, right? Because what you're doing is you're not really giving it food, you're not giving it structure, you're not giving it a healthy diet that will last over time, it's like a big energy shot. Um, so that's good with the nutrients. Um, also like, who's ever had a house plant where A, already like the soil starts to get gray, and then you like water it, and you're like, this is all it needs, and the water just drains out the bottom, and you're like, what happened? Everyone's nodding, that's depressing. The plant is usually dead soon after. And that's because the soil structure that you have there is not amenable and like inviting to the plant roots. So it doesn't hold on to water. They're these amazing little pockets that like compost and other organic matters make um, within the soil that hold water, that hold air. And these are things that like all living creatures, plants need to do their magic. Um, so it's great for soil uh, texture, retaining water, slow-release nutrients, um, and alternative chemical fertilizers, yes. So this is kind of like some benefits of compost on the micro level. Oh my god, the you level, this is the us level. So this is kind of like a newer slide in my life, um, where, and this is like all touchy-feely about the compost, but it is true. So there's a practical thing. So composting can affect each one of you. You know, for you're like, oh, you know, freak the environment, or like, I don't care about the soil. But maybe you care about yourself, or you know someone who does, or you're trying to convince someone. So first thing, money. Save money. Oh my God. So if you're gardening, or even if you're like house planting, or if you are lucky to have a lawn, but somehow you like need to water it and stuff, like those are all things that cost. Buy soil for your garden. You know, we all go to Home Depot, buy the $8 bag of like tiny organic soil, and you're like, ugh. Um, save money because you can make it. And so this is something, the money is more of like a scale thing. So if any of you are like at community gardens, um, one of the, you know, the Lower East Side Ecology Center, like that does the, well, they started the green market drop off thing, like early in the 80s. Um, and the reason they started it was they had a space, they were only doing the textile collections, and they had this, and I'm sorry, not textile, the electronics collections, um, I was thinking of the previous talk, in uh, Lori's side at their community garden, and they were like, well, gee, we're just community gardeners, we need soil, we don't have any. What if we like kind of cozy up to the folks at the Union Square Green Market and say, can we just have a garbage can here and stand here and take people's scraps? Um, and they were somehow, like, somehow that was okay. And, um, you know, look to decades later, they have a whole compost facility uh, that they make their own compost. They sell, like, I think it's called, like, New York Pay Dirt. Um, and they have their amazing garden. But also, they have spurred a, mo a movement, right? So now the, uh, I think it's Grow NYC, manages all of the compost pro uh, pickups. Um, there's some innovative ones where they have now created, like, commuter drop-offs uh, that was, like, big reuse they used to be called Build a Green, now I think they're Big Reuse or Reuse USA, is that, is that the, it's just Reuse, period. Okay, so, so that's cool, rebranding, just that's fine, it happens. And the, but they like piloted a program of like, okay, let's make it even easier and like stand at the corner and just, and, and these things are working and like many, many, I should have the number and I don't and I apologize, but just like trust me, like on a given week, any compost project around the city that's actually processing this, these wastes are getting deliveries of 15, thousand plus pounds of residential waste only that's dropped off by individuals like you who like put it in the freezer and get on your bike and you're like here's my stuff so that is like amazing and so yes yes oh my god so see so that was some joy and that kind of goes to this picture now so that's kind of like me and I'm like oh I just feel so zenned out right now I'm in my worm bin and it does actually feel good and I can't even lie and we're all kind of laughing but like you know when you're like you're on Facebook and you're like, today I walked in the park. It was great. I looked at the sun for five seconds and oh, I'm alive, right? Like imagine if you had like a touch point like that on your, in, the, in your day to day. Um, here, oh my God, 
kids love it. So if you're family people or other people's family people, um, it's a great activity that brings families together. It's something like if you think about your household, it becomes a project that you can all do. Um, and again, like it's not like you're all at the dinner table like texting your friends or like even watching TV or a movie, which I know, don't get me wrong, I will binge Netflix at like any day of my life. But how, how nice of it, how nice would it be if like a family cooked dinner together and then you had the scraps from like the cucumber butts and then you're like, oh, we're gonna give it to the, you know, it's nice. Um, no cell zone, and also, this is kind of self-explanatory, too many screens. It's like so bad for all of us, it's like super fun and addictive and like we're becoming robots. And this is a, this is a picture of Earth Matter. Um, I took it from their Instagram. Love you guys. Uh, but they do, they, this is one of the drop-offs that I talked about where, I'm sorry, one of the compost projects that gets the drop-offs. So this is like, not quite 15,000, but like a piece of a 15,000 pound drop-off. Um, and then what happens? Like neighbors, you know, offices, et cetera, get together um, and they run a really, great program, so maybe you guys might all do this and I'll go to Governor's Island and make giant windrows of compost. The point is you create community, you do this in community gardens, um, you talk to people, you work with your hands and you're out in the world. And I think that that's really valuable. Um, clearly getting old and wise and crotchety. Um, okay, so when you're like, hey, do you compost at a party and people are like, gross, it's because there's this perception that composting is this. Like, oh, I'm sweaty, I need a pitchfork, I need a giant tropical field, and like, boots. I don't have those boots, and like, uh, this is horrible, right? And so nobody wants to do it, and they don't think they could do it here in New York City. They don't think they could do it when they're living with like, six roommates, and then like half of them have partners, and there's like a cat, and it's just like, there's no way. But I am going to reveal to you that, ooh, composting can look like this. Ooh la la, these are all different systems and like things and they're kind of pretty. And this is not like a pitch because I'm also gonna show you the very, the reason why this is here, it's because this can become any of these things. But like you can hack it, right? Like it's just a banana peel, so we can figure it out together. Um, so, the compost recipe, like big picture, before us, um, Mother Earth, Ma Earth uh, had a plan where things lived, and they ate each other, and they grew, and then they died, and then they ate the thing that died, and then, you know, cycle. Really amazing. And she you knows what she's doing. Like, and did you guys see that article? Like, it was like a week ago in Op-Ed in the Times, and it was like, forget the end of the world. The world's going to be fine. We should just be concerned about the end of our civilization, and if we all die, Earth is fine. Earth will fix herself or his, its self, their self. Um, so Mother Nature had it right. And what we do when we compost is we replicate the conditions that she, he, the, it, they uh, first made. And, and we do it in, in a controlled setting that kind of fits into our lifestyle, into our space, into our work stream. And I'm gonna keep saying that because again, like there is a way for every single person in this room to do it at a scale that makes sense for them. Um, because again, like, I do not join CrossFit. I go to yoga like once every two months. <laughs> and like, that's how we start, right? So what goes into compost? So, okay, the, the slang in the compost world, if you're gonna read all these forums after you get out of this, because this is so exciting for you. Greens, greens are like nitrogen rich, sort of like moist things. Um, your fruit peels, so that's kind of the things most of us in here will compost. Uh, if you think about like, you know, grass clippings or fresh clippings, greens. Um, don't be confused about the word green because coffee is brown, but it is a green. Uh, so just think like wet and, and like recently alive-ish, okay? <laughs> Browns are dead, they are like the, the autumn leaves lying on the ground. Um, no, that's not negative though. That's beautiful. I love autumn. They're the, they're the brown leaves lying on the ground. Um, and like we replicate those like with, you didn't think about shredded paper, um, non-waxy papers, like nothing that's like overly treated. So let's kind of like, that's also another presumption. Like let's not think like, you know, cereal boxes and magazines, but everything's relatively like untreated. Um, Amazon, we all have Prime. That's fine. Um, 
And people were, one question, or one thing that comes up about browns, people are like, oh, what about the dyes, like, for the, or the inks? For the most part, like, a lot of uh, printing things in newspapers is soy-based. You could always call. It will probably take a lot of phone calls and emails before someone actually can officially, officially tell you. But, like, the majority of, like, newspaper things are soy. If that matters to you, I am not fussy. I compost lots of things, but because what's the alternative? I don't know. But uh, anyway, you mix these two together, and it's kind of like making cookies or your favorite cocktail. Like, there's always like a ratio that does this, the thing that works for you. So like 100% vodka, nothing else. I feel great, you know. Um, but, and that's like one way. So there are, so we're gonna talk through different systems that have different ratios of green plus brown, but ultimately the different ways you mix it together, it equals black gold, which is also what it is called on the internet. Okay, so that's a start, Gr uh, green, brown, black. However, we need some help. So pretty, right? Oh my God, I love these things. Um, bacteria is interesting because there's different bacteria that does different work at different temperatures in different conditions, like in all of life. So when you think about like these piles that I would guess most people here would start creating kind of room temperature piles, you have your mesophilic sort of like chill out bacteria that do their thing slowly over time, right? That's who's hanging out on the forest floor um, and like layers under it. Uh, however, if you've heard of hot composting or, you know, or when you see it get hot, like in the picture of the, the dudes like turning the hot compost in the steam, um, that's actually a real thing that sometimes people do very purposefully. Um, it can happen by accident. But that's when thermophilic bacteria comes in, and that's like over 130 degrees. Um, they're there because you've created a certain volume, this is like science, so like a certain volume of ratio of the wet stuff to the dry stuff. And um, it's basically like opening the doors to the club for these like bacteria that's like, ah, oh, this is the best condition. And they like eat, and they go crazy, and they're dancing, and it's amazing, and it happens really fast. So people purposefully do hot composting. It's called the Berkeley method, um, and you have to turn it <laughs> True. <laughs> so those West Coasters know what they're doing. Um, but, you know, this is very purposeful because, A, if you have a high volume of waste, so if you are in a community garden and you want to process things fast, um, if you just want to process things fast and you have space and you go around and you're like, hey, juice bar, give me your scraps. Hey, whoever, give me your shredded boxes, which people do because they're just throwing it out anyway. You can use the hot composting method, and that's when you're using a different kind of bacteria. Um, Mold and fungus, people are like, ew, mold and fungus. No, they're great. Um, mold and fungus are super interesting. There's a lot of like research right now about the power of like mycelium. Um, and they like create these like networks in the soil. It's like soil internet. You're like totally, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so it's like, oh, I'm fungus over here, but I there's a threat over there. So I'm gonna like email like everybody over here through my fungal powers. And then, like, we might be messed up over there, but these guys have time to figure it out. You know, so anyway, like, the tree now is like, thanks, and then it get, makes itself like, I'm going to resist you threat. Um, so the point is, is that mold and fungus, super powerful, super important to natural processes, um, and usually, like, show up in kind of cooler, damper temperatures, um, and are not bad. So if you, when, when you all start composting in whatever way, shape, or form, and these things appear, do not freak out. Like if it's a little slimy, sometimes you're going to want it, which we'll get to in the Bokashi method. Um, but don't freak out. It's supposed to be there. And like, unless it's, I don't know, maybe like toxic looking maybe, and I wouldn't even know it. That might be like a blue or a green kind of mold, but that's rare. Um, don't worry about it. Also invertebrates. Earthworms, um, this is some sort of, I don't know what it is, I just thought it was pretty, but like a flying thing. Um, what is it? This is a what? what? Maybe, you think? It only has one set of wings though. We, I don't know, maybe. Anyway, it's pretty. But the point is that there's so many millions of these that I couldn't name them all, and um, I can't clearly name one of them. But they like do things like they turn, like worms go through the soil and they create tunnels, which like helps with the air and the water, et cetera. We're going to talk a lot about worms. Um, the bugs like pick at things and eat things and break them apart. And then they make these little tiny poops that are like magic. They're part of the system too. So we need all these things. Okay, four elements. Ooh, so 
basic earth, wind, water, fire. I'm like, I'm not really, what do they represent? So, so we, we talked about the earth part, that's the brown, green part. We talked a little bit about the air thing, which is the anaerobic conditions, which is no air, right? Decom decomposition happens, but it's not like the ideal scenario. So most of what we're going to talk about today is um, anaerobic compost. I mean, aerobic compost, which involves our friend air, because air helps. Uh, similarly with water, uh, all these living things need water uh, to live and do their processes. However, there can always be too much of a good thing. So we'll talk about that. And temperature. So that just kind of, like the bacteria thing is a good example where you don't need temperature to be like super hot to make things go fast unless you want things to go fast. And again, most people are pretty passive. You'll have a bin, it just does its thing like when it does it, and you're like, great. Three years later, I have this much compost, and it did it, yay, without me doing anything. Um, but you know, the, the point of bringing up temperature is that your conditions will affect the speed and the behavior of uh, what happens in your pile. <sighs> so Armando. So I wrote this book, and probably because there's things like that in it, we'll see. I don't know. I, there's no major motion picture yet. Um, but I, and I did these illustrations, and there's, this, there's a sponge in it called Armando, the wrung out sponge. And in my mind, he kind of has this like Antonio Banderas thing, but it could be whoever you like. Um, and the idea of this like kind of roguish superhero sponge is that as you're making compost in general, or if, if you're making like environments for compost, like the worm bins, which we'll talk about, um, it should be as damp as Armando is. So think of him always. So if you're like scooping up your compost, you're kind of pushing around and like it's mucky, Armando will be like, no, that is terrible. You know? He will literally lead you. And it's kind of silly, but you hopefully never forget this handsome guy because it will, he will help a lot when you're like, is this going well? Or like, oh, look, Armando, I did it. It feels just like your soft skin. Um, so keep that in mind. So now, so that's a bunch of science stuff. Um, any questions about the science-y things? Great. And you, <laughs> oh. I don't know how much more I could help you though. So, okay, so now we are going to like get practical and tactical. Yay, we're gonna be like, so I started using Slack in the last year. Does anyone use that at, like, at work? Do you guys Slack each other? Okay, it's like a chatting program. I've used to hate emojis and it like, I needed to not, like I was gonna put like a thousand emojis in this presentation, but there's just, that's one of like three. Okay, so the backyard and outdoor composting. So this is pretty common. This is if you have space. Who has space? A yard, ooh, lucky, nice, four. That's about right, like four out of every 50 New Yorkers <laughs> has like one square foot of, okay, so anyway, the, these are open bins, pretty simple. It's a structure, there's like holes, you can kind of see these like dot things, airflow. There's often nothing on the bottom because it's on soil. So the idea is that, oh, it will rain and the water can, you know, go into the bottom. Or, oh, look, I'm a worm underneath here and I found all this food so they can come up. Um, pretty common, you need space. You can protect these from critters by using hardware cloth. And I'll show you a picture of hardware cloth later. It is not cloth. It is metal. So it is hard. Uh, but it's like a really, like a, a tiny mesh. It's like more more meshy than this, but you can kind of pick the amount. Anyway, that's how you block critters and you line it and they're like, I've met a metal wall, I cannot go. Um, so if you do something like this, when you feed your bin, this is like a belly, um, go for a one to one or a two to one carbon to uh, nitrogen ratio. Um, and the idea is because this is out in the nature, always put the brown stuff on top. Um, it is a biofilter, so it will block odors. It will somewhat deter pests, but like pizza rat will like get in there. Um, unless you do all the metal stuff, so don't forget that. Um, but this is something that you definitely want to put like a lot of browns, like don't cheap out on your leaves or whatever, because again, things can dig through. So if it's like half an inch of leaves, it's, you're not impressing anybody with that, and the smell might come through and creatures can get through. Um, and then, or you can also like dig a hole once the pile starts to get established, you can kind of like dig a hole if all your browns are on top, kind of nest it underneath and cover it back up if you are short on lots of browns. 
Um, but this is something that, yeah, you can let sit for a while and hang. Um, there are versions, if you do not have a soil, soil access in your yard, that have like bottoms on them. So who's seen these? I think they, they all right, well, Home Depot, it's like literally a, like a galvanized metal can. Holes for air. Um, good for patios, balconies, alleys, like rooftops. If we're going to your place afterwards for the party. But um, this uh, basically kind of replicates that bin, but in a small system. Um, there are versions of this that if you do have the soil bottom, this doesn't have a bottom on it, and it is all enclosed. So kind of like, unlike this, which is like tons of access, tons of air, and frankly like a lot bigger, more compact, uh, you put stuff in from the top, you open up this drawer, and like eventually there's compost in here. And like, I just wanna get to the eventually thing for a second. Um, when you compost, the volume of what you put in will reduce by at least 90%, and that's nine zero. So people are like, when can I have it? And I need like fields of it for my amazingly huge garden plot. Like that will take forever, like seriously, in a, if you're being passive about it. Like if you do the big compost and the Berkeley method and the mussels, then you will have it faster. But this is a slow, slow thing. So like you may get one of these, put it on top of your lawn. It's like three years later, you open it and you're like, oh, not bad, like this much compost after like every meal I've ever eaten was put in here, great. I mean, great if, you don't, if you're not dying for tons of compost. But again, my point in bringing that up is that you don't have to worry that much, especially as urban people, that you're gonna like compost yourself out of house and home. Um, bucket, so five gallon buckets. I go to, I work near a Potbelly's and you can, you know, that sandwich shop. They get pickles, food grade buckets, yellow with lovely red lids. They throw them away. And so I was like, oh, look at those nice buckets. Can I have them? And they're like, totally, because we're going to throw them away. You can source buckets for free. So if like you're working in any community projects, kids projects, if you don't want to like, something like this might be like, I don't know, 90 bucks, right? Like, so that's, there's a difference. Something like this, 100 something dollars. Get a bucket um, and you can replicate these kinds of things in a bucket by just drilling holes. If you want to, you know, do the thing where the bottom is gone, cut out the bottom, and then you have a lid. Five bucks or free, but you need a drill. Care and maintenance. Okay, we talked about this. Um, oh, actually, you know what? The difference between this and this, I mentioned the liquid. If the liquid go into the soil, you, it's very forgiving. If it is totally enclosed, you kind of have to be, ooh, sorry, you have to be a little bit more careful um, with your ratios because if you're like, oh, watermelon, barbecue, all these rinds, so wet, and you put it in there, you're like, I'm doing good. <laughs> if you don't have enough browns in there, which soak up a lot of this moisture, which again, create those ratios, right? It's gonna start getting mucky and crazy, and this is where like good compost goes bad and you become that person. Um, and this goes to back to the recipes, right? So every food or everything that you put in there is gonna have like a different behavior. So if you think about like an, an avocado rind, which is around forever and everyone loves avocados now, very slow, not wet, will take forever to break down and not do like a whole ton of magic in there, in a, in a pile. Watermelon rinds, again, summer's coming, super wet, 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 wet. Although you can actually make a chutney out of the white part, I recommend you all look up that recipe because who knew? Very delicious. But assuming you don't make the chutney very wet. And so that can mess up and imbalance that, like, you know, four elements, the water piece. Armando would be like, ugh. So just keep him in mind, and it will help. Uh, yeah, so, the, so when, this is more like uh, about the type of space you'd have it in. So when there's no bottom, you should put it on soil. Because that way, you know what I mean? Everything will drip out. But if you have like a patio or like one of those, great. Any other questions? Okay. Um, turning and mixing, the guys with the pitchfork. So that's good because you can mix stuff up if there's a super wet watermelon corner and there's a super dry, oh my God, it's already time. Oh my God, I got too philosophical. Okay, so tumbling is something that turns your compost for you. You can buy a tumbler or you can make one of these, turn it on its side and roll it down the sidewalk the free version. Tumblers are like a couple hundred bucks. Um, to harvest, obviously, you want your amazing compost. You're so psyched. And this is a fancy crate and barrel version. You can not have to use that. You can get an old milk crate, steal one. No, don't steal one, acquire one. Um, 
and you can shake out like the bigger pieces of your compost that are not yet done. Underground digesters, love these. So the city of Seattle, before they had their amazing municipal program, actually subsidized these. Oh, and there's a diagram <laughs> that I drew. Okay, so the, the concept is you bury half of this belly underground. It has a bunch of holes in it. All the creatures go. The top part is exposed to sun, which kind of creates like a sun tunnel or a sun vortex. So, ooh, super hot. Oh, all those hot bacteria want to do their things, plus these insects. Um, and this is a really great and forgiving thing you can do, frankly, like in a planter, in your window box. Oh, and you can always like bury stuff in your soil too. But you can make these like with those Folgers coffee can things. And like, again, think small. We don't have to like go out of control here because it's better to start small and succeed than like be so ambitious and then like die under a pile of like rotting things. Um, so again, bucket, you just drill, don't drill the top because the idea is that you kind of create this heat chamber. And then bury up to here, throw your scraps in it, submerge it in soil. Oh, and the interesting thing about this too is that it can be all greens. So you don't need to do that brown green ratio thing as much because you're literally dumping it in a belly underground. If you open it and it might f smell a little like funky, you can then cover it with leaves as the biofilter that we talked about, but not super like invasive and you can, again, a lot more forgiving. Useful composting items. This is a super close up of hardware cloth. Buckets can also be used aside from bins themselves to carry things around and store things. Sifter we talked about. Tarp. You never know when you're going to need some tarp, like to dump things out on. Dead bodies. Just kidding. OK. So this is like, this was the thing that I told you I ruined the first time and that a lot of people ruined the first time. Um, there is a species of worm, red wigglers. They don't like to go anywhere. They like to eat a lot, reproduce a lot, and poop a lot. So what you do is you get a box or make one. Don't look at that one yet, because that's a little more explaining that will happen. But you get a box, start with about a pound, which is a thousand worms. You can buy them from the Lower East Side Ecology Center. Um, give them some bedding. So it's like, what's that company? Parachute or you know, fancy bedding, but it's really like paper that is dampened to feel like who? Whom? To feel like who? Yes, woo, Rondo. I was like, get, let's get t-shirts from him. So anyway, so bedding damp, right? Because you need to create something that's like amenable because worms have a wet exterior and um, they breathe through it. And by the way, if you ever hold a worm and uh, it squirts out something yellow on you, it is not peeing, but it's actually this like stressful liquid that they squirt out like, I'm stressed. Ugh. Um, because like the surface of your hand, super dry, all the access to light, uncomfortable, because they don't like light a lot. Um, and anyway, you put them in this thing, you put them in the bedding, and then you feed them. And this is where everyone goes wrong, because you're like, I'm going to feed them everything, which is bad for any living thing in a small box. I'm a big fan of portion control. Um, so I would say for your first thing, a worm, for your first pound of worms, one to two cups, of food scraps, no citrus please, because the oils can be damaging to the worms, uh, science says. Um, freeze that, the, those food scraps first. What does that do? It begins decomposition. It could also kill any pest eggs that are on the surface. So like, you know, corner store, you get the banana, fly was on it, fly eggs. It's like fly universe, don't do that. So if you freeze it, you can kill these eggs. Um, thaw it, because if you do the watermelon thing, um, thawing, a lot of the water will leach out already. You can drain that. So again, you don't want to put like tons of water because it's like putting a ton of food in your bedroom, basically. Like you want it to be controllable. Put it in, the worms will eat it and watch them. And this is where all the factors come in. If it's cool, they'll be slower. If it's warm like today, they'll be faster. If it's warm like a couple of days ago, they might die and be cooked because they are like people. So if you're uncomfortable, they're probably uncomfortable and that's always actually a good, so if you're like, I'm turning on my AC and leaving the worms like not in the AC room, like just kind of bring them in with you because like that is really gnarly, a cooked worm box. Um, so to harvest, really easy. There are systems like this. The worms go where the food is. Oh, we're eating. Oh, there's more food up here. We've eaten everything and we're gonna travel. They travel up. Eventually, they all migrate the one on the bottom is left behind, all pure worm castings. 
Worm poop is super microbially rich. It's why if you go to the store, buying vermicompost in like a little bag is like $25, but buying like a million cubic yards is like five bucks. Like it seems imbalanced and it's because of the potency of these things. Uh, these things being each individual poop. Um, so this is a system, I've never had a lot of luck getting mine to work, but people swear by them. It's called flow through. Bokashi, so after my love affair with worms, which still exists, I kind of like broke up with them and started dating Bokashi, um, which is really amazing because it all happens in an airtight bucket. So there are commercial versions and then there's the famous bucket version. But you can compost, ev or, I'm sorry, you can ferment everything in a bucket. And when I say everything, I mean everything, like your cooked food, your oily food, your meats, your bones, your weird condiments, like anything can go in there, which I would not recommend for regular compost. Not because it won't break down, because in nature it will break down anything, but because you are then responsible for any food or creatures or putrefaction that happens in like an outdoor bin. So that's really the reason why we say best practices, right, is to not put all those things in a regular compost bin. Totally do it here. And what happens, it's like, think about lasagna. You're like, okay, all my food, I'm cleaning out the fridge, dumping it in. Then I sprinkle these magical flakes on it. And the magical flakes, which you can make yourself or purchase, are inoculated with anaerobic bacteria, uh, phototrophic, uh, lac, uh, the milk lactose, lactic bacteria, and another one that I can't remember. I'm sorry, but I can email you guys. Um, and they are anaerobic fermenters. So once you put your food in, you sprinkle a layer like the mozzarella cheese on the lasagna, close the bucket, and it starts to ferment. And over time, right, you fill it up. It takes me a very long time to fill up one of the, these things. But, you know, depending on how much you cook, how much you eat, and how much you don't eat, this could get really full relatively fast. It ferments in this airtight container, and then you take this bucket, and um, you find someone, there's a part B, which I should have warned you about at first. You find someone who will let you bury it <laughs> in their like backyard or community garden. So the children's garden, for example, on 12th and A. Um, does anyone live in the East 12th and A? Do you know the children's garden? It's like near El Sol Briante. Do you know it? Okay, so, I mean, walk by there, just FYI. Um, and I have a lot of these local stories in my book, too, which is not to like, be like, my book, my book, whatever. I have to just talk to all these people. Um, they do, like, 10,000 pounds of fermented residential waste drop off a year, and they buried it. And because it's, like, super, it's fermented, and there's all this, like, stuff going on, like some soil magic and microbe magic in there, um, they've actually rehabilitated a lot of the soil there, which in that area was super toxic. Um, and because of the power of these microbes, like they go in and they break things down and, and literally it is the children's garden because it's an educational garden that kids grow stuff in. And they feel comfortable doing that with them, which is really amazing. And when you walk on it, like the ground is like sort of like soft and fluffy and it feels like very magical and the opposite of the sidewalk. Um, so I love doing this. I also started a, uh, a thing at my workspace at a co-working space that I belonged to for over a decade. Um, we do buckets there, and I just kind of pick them up occasionally. I have a, like, a little shack upstate, and I'll like, bury them up there. Um, but like, they do all their fridge cleanouts, all their coffee, tea, and it's because it's a bucket, you know, it's, they put it under the sink, and then I just come and get them. It's a pretty interesting solution. Um, so that's kind of it, because we're also out of time. So have fun composting. <laughs> um, please keep in touch. And like, thank you. I, I really do mean like keep in touch. Like if you're interested in this, I'll be around um, to chat a bunch too. But um, I'm most active on Instagram. I don't really do Facebook and Twitter. But email me if you're like, I saw this thing. What does it mean? I'm like, oh, well, I can tell you. We can talk about it forever and be best friends and <laughs> compost. But do seriously keep in touch because I just want everything to go right in all of your endeavors. And I want you to be excited unless you find me scary, and then don't <laughs> call me. <laughs> call the other people here who are doing it. But thanks so much. Yeah, so that is trickier, um, because you can't like dump it at one of those food drops. Like, you need an in with a lot of soil or garden or backyard. You raised your hand, you have like a yard, right? Is that what you, so you can get his number. Um, but like that's kind of how it works because you have to build like a trench and then, but once it's there, you just dump it in and cover it. 
and then it becomes part of the soil. They don't have to turn it or take care of it. It's great to grow on top of because it's like ridiculously um, nutrient rich. But yeah, so there's a little of that that has to happen. <laughs> Anything else? Oh yeah. Woo. <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh. Ooh. What are you going to do with it afterwards? Nice. I love it. So eat a lot and then well, okay. <laughs> The city worries about that. So you can be totally at peace. Okay. Yeah. If you can, yeah. But you know, it's kind of interesting because it is opt-in, right? And I don't think that, I think the presumption is that 100% of people won't do it. So if you ask your neighbor, or if you're in the elevator like gossiping, I bet some people will be like, oh yeah, you know, I haven't really. Oh, sh I should start, right? Or am I wrong? Well, you said that they were like overflowing. What neighborhood? Washington Heights. Oh, the drug. Yeah. So those are like the community driven ones. Yeah, then the municipal. But if it's a huge building, like in theory, like if we, let's say, do the landfill thing and maybe a third, right, of our trash might be organic stuff, leftovers and whatever. Yeah, just, you know. Yeah. But maybe that's also a good thing to emphasize, right? Like some people respond to guilt. Some people just want to feel that they're helping, especially now like today's political climate makes it very hard to feel good about anything in the environment. So if someone's all like, I'm so angry about whatever, you could be like, well, here's one little thing. And if, you know, I, but it is a mind game sometimes. All right, enjoy lunch, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.